Hi, this is Pastor Rick. I'm glad you could join me. I want to talk to you today about the third mark of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. The first one was a family. We're supposed to love Jesus most of those in our family. Second, we're a cross. We're supposed to die to ourselves and follow Jesus Christ. And the third mark is a tower. And uh, I want you to think about this. We're supposed to give our life to Jesus Christ and finish well. Let me read it and you'll see what I mean. In uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 28, it says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. So uh, the Lord wants you and I to finish well, and um, if you are a true believer and a true disciple of Jesus Christ, a follower and student of Jesus, he will enable you to finish well in your life. So when he says, for which of you intending to build a tower, what he's really talking here about is to build your life. Um, he wants you to be strong. When you are weak and when you're scared, he wants you to run to him and he will uh, uphold you, strengthen you, guide you, provide for you. Um, and he says, who doesn't first sit down when you're going to build something and consider the cost? There are sometimes people say that they have professed Jesus Christ as their Savior, and then they just fall away. They disappear. I don't know what happened. I'm not the judge of anyone. However, when people say they are a believer in Jesus Christ and then just fall away and become something else, it does give you some suspicion. Did they really understand what they were saying? And had they considered the cost of becoming a disciple of Jesus? The cost of being a disciple is the previous mark, dying to self and living for God and others. Some people have never died to self. They still want to live for themselves. It's all about meeting their needs. If you don't meet their needs the way they want, then they want to walk away and do something else. When I gave my life to Jesus Christ, it is all of God. There is no credit to me at all. But when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, I had to come to the place where I repented of my sin and I asked Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sin. I received him as my Savior and the Lord of my life. I surrendered to him and I wanted him to take control of my life. I promise you, Jesus does a better job of driving than I do. <laughs> and he's the one who knows where we should go, where we shouldn't go, and how to live our life if we'll just let him talk to us and listen to him. So it says, uh, after we've laid the foundation and is not able to finish, I promise you something. If you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you yield your life to him. And if you've counted the cost, you're willing to give your life, by the way you come out because he gives you his who's ahead you are and it and he says uh able to finish god is able to hold you and keep you against that day when you meet him if you're a believer in jesus he holds you in his hand he will never let go of you he will never forsake you he'll never leave you alone no matter what you and i ever go through in this life you don't have to go through it by yourself jesus is with you that is a wonderful promise. So when it talks about giving your life to Jesus, that's the best deal you'll ever make, ever, in all your life. And he will enable you to finish your life as a true disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. You'll never, ever regret doing that. God bless you.